Good morning, KU. I'm Brett Ivey. And I'm Jill Bainbridge. Happy Friday. We <laughs> hope your Friday is starting out as well as ours is. Mm -hmm. You know, some something not like my Friday morning is some people's last nights with a little film company called I'm Schmacked. Mm -hmm. Might have been a little rough for some people. Can you give us a little hint on what I'm Schmacked yeah. is? Uh, uh, I'm Schmacked is a kind of a YouTube production company uh, based out of Miami that travels to different colleges around the nation and kind of uh, films all the different kind of acti activities that college students like to do on the weekends. Um, you know, and they're they're apparently in Lawrence this weekend and a lot of, a lot of organizations are kind of telling their people to kind of uh, stay away away from what, whatever's going on there. Absolutely, and as you're seeing on your screen right now, highlighting some of the quote unquote fun parts of college, maybe the, the party school side, but I know that I through my sorority and maybe you through your orga organization as well have been warned to stay away from these cameras. Um, they have been known to follow people into you know, your job interviews, things you don't really want to have come up and want to have your name attached to. We saw you know, last year with the Al Jazeera videos mm -hmm. and you know, I think the KU community as a whole has been doing their best to avoid these cameras. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just kind of, just kind of keeping. We're just trying to keep uh, public relations on our good side here. Um, what I'm Schmack does, from what I've seen on YouTube and what their videos they've put out, they are promoting the party school mentality. Um, and I think when when a school does that, we they really kind of lose a lot of reputation. Mm -hmm. Having a party school mentality isn't the greatest thing to have. As a school, you want to kind of push off saying, hey, we are here to give our students an education, uh, and I think I'm Schmacked is definitely not doing that. Right, so. having a good time, but not necessarily in a way that will ruin your reputation and follow mm -hmm. you into your future career. So I'm Schmacked has a Twitter that has gotten a lot of attention mm -hmm. this weekend here at KU. Um, some of the tweets, you know, ranging from you know, we're, we're here, good morning, with an excited Spongebob face. They, they tweeted at the cave. What I, what I was following earlier was the cave tweeted something like, I'm schmacked, won't be allowed in, students don't worry, because a lot of students have been avoiding some of those bars and clubs this weekend. And then they tweeted back, I feel all good, thanks anyway. I heard the place is a lot of fun. Followed up by, guess we should just have fun at Kansas this weekend and not make a video. So it looks like they they might be they might be headed out of here. Well, yeah, definitely. We'll see what happens. You know, they still have their hidden camera tricks that they do from time to time. But uh, but you know, good on all the organizations and all the uh, companies out of KU to kind of turn them away. I think that's definitely a step in the right exactly. direction. Exactly. We're we're staying safe. So definitely. Uh, but kind of moving on to a different topic now. Uh, one of my favorite things on the internet has been happening this weekend. I want to sound like a total nerd doing this, so please don't worry. Uh, but uh, a, a video game stream on the internet site twitch.tv uh, has kind of come across and has had a huge, huge following over the past week called Twitch Plays Pokemon. And Jill, I know you may not know too much about it, but what are your thoughts on what you've, from what you've seen earlier? You know, we were pulling it up before uh, we, want, we went on air about 30 minutes ago, and it, it's about 70,000 people playing the same Pokemon game on the computer <laughs> at the same time. So I was watching... I don't know what the little character is called, but I was waiting for it to do something, and it wouldn't do anything because everybody was canceling out each other's actions. How frustrating is that? Well, definitely, you know. Uh, but little background, actually, Twitch plays Pokemon, which is the name of the stream, um, is about seventy to eighty thousand people all playing a game at the same time. They've actually been online now for nine days, so a little over a week. I started that around five thousand people playing, but has since ballooned to such a huge number. They peaked the other day at about one hundred twenty thousand people watching at the same time. So just absolutely massive viewership, all trying to do the same thing. What's really cool is that they've, they've kind of developed this quasi-societal structure kind of going on in it too, which is really cool to see. They have like a religious base. They have like anarchy and democracy voting. It's, it's, it is intense to watch. It, plus, it's just super funny to see what all is going on. Uh, but the kind of the, it's also really fun just to watch the hive mind mentality kind of take over. And Sounds like a gamer's paradise. Like you get the social aspect and the gaming aspect, <laughs> well, I guess. You know, yeah, it's just about perfect. You know, and it's it's so fun. I've been following it online at reddit.com slash r slash twitch plays Pokemon. So if you don't have time to watch the stream, they do have a live update thread there. Plus, you can catch up on all the action there. So I think that's really fun. All right. Well, there you go. I think that's all we have for about right now. I will be back in just a minute with our special guest, Ashley Kennedy. Stay, t stay tuned. <laughs> 
Welcome back to Good Morning KU. We are here with Ashley Kennedy. <laughs> Ashley, thanks so much for joining us yeah, today. Of course. So I heard you are in a new movie called Jayhawkers. Is that correct? Yes. Can yes, I am. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, I just play an extra. I'm, you know, just a feature extra, so I don't have any speaking lines within the movie. But it was definitely a great experience. It premiered this past uh, this past weekend, this past Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and now it's going to be traveling into different locations. Um, and I think it's going to be playing at Liberty Hall as well um, later on in a couple weeks, okay. I assume. Yeah. Okay, great. So what is what is the movie about? I know it's called The Jayhawkers, so that obviously appeals to me and probably right. a lot of other people on this campus. Um, Jayhawkers is about the story of Wilt Chamberlain and Fog Allen and their connection with uh, KU basketball. There's a lot of tradition. It's it's a very, very cool film. Oh, good. That that sounds great. So your, your target audience for this movie, who is this really... Who is this really showing for? Is it like the boys with the sports side, or is there a little bit of like romantic with, for the girls? <laughs> um, a little less romance, because I played, the character that I played was Wilt Chamberlain's girlfriend. If you know anything about Wilt Chamberlain, is that he had many, many girlfriends. So I just played one of many of okay. those. So um, not a lot of love, but a lot of basketball, a lot of basketball. So I know a lot of Lawrence fans, you know, you love KU basketball, as you should probably. You um, you will definitely enjoy this film. Okay, good to know. So, can you tell us a little bit about what your role was specifically? I know you said you were an extra, but that's still pretty mm -hmm. cool that you were in the movie. So, did he did he take you on a date? Did you? Um, well, I kind of was his um, uh, his. I don't know, his somebody to take him around the campus, kind of like his his side piece, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, but I. I was in a couple scenes um, kind of just helping him get a feel for what KU is all about, I guess. Right. So, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. So I hear that this is not the only acting role you've had before. Um, no, I am actually a theater major, so I do a lot of the plays here at, at KU. and. Um, then occasionally I'll go up to Kansas City and I'll audition for various things with the with the agency that I'm a part of. Okay. And I was able to land a Brown Mackey College commercial, which is kind of like an Everest or you know like get your degree in mm -hmm. you know a couple months type of um, type of commercials. And I had three words. <laughs> Three words. They were very important I words, bet, I but bet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun and definitely a really great experience being on camera and being able to see it. That I, sounds like so much fun. Yeah, I actually didn't even know that it was going to be coming on. I was sitting in my living room watching Maury one day and. Lo and behold, there I am on on the TV. Hey, Mom, I'm famous. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> wow, that, that's really It neat. was a lot of fun. How did you come across the role in Jayhawkers? Did you have to audition, or did they just find you? I or? did not. They were actually doing local auditions, and, um, and I was going to audition, but there wasn't a part specifically kind of for my age range, or they weren't looking for a part kind of for a woman. Um, and so I just kind of sent in my headshot and resume as an extra and said, mm -hmm. hey, if you need anybody, I'm here, I'm available, I'm willing to do anything. And so they got back to me and they said that, you know, hey, we, you want to be Wilt Chamberlain's girlfriend? And at that time, I didn't know that Wilt Chamberlain had a lot of girlfriends. So I was like, oh, hey, I'm, yes. I'm the one and only over here. And then I get to set. And <laughs> it was a different story then. How many girlfriends did he have? I don't An know, estimate, but like, it's it's pretty it's pretty high it's up, up there. there. Yeah, you know, rumors. Who knows? Can't but say I knew that about Daryl Wilson yes, there. Yeah, right. and working with um, just Justin West Wesley, mm -hmm. who played Wilt Chamberlain, um, was a lot of fun. He was a really nice guy, really quiet, but he was a nice guy. Yeah. Okay, well good to know. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for being with us. I know I really look forward to seeing that and I hope you guys can have a chance to see that too. We'll be back with Michael and Sam in just a minute. Welcome back. I'm Sam Harms. And I'm Michael O'Brien and this is your Friday Good Morning KU News Update. Ukraine has officially voted to restore a previous constitution that limits the powers of the president and calls for presidential elections in March 2015. According to the Associated Press, the vote is a part of the breakthrough deal between the opposition and the president. This deal was meant to end the political crisis and bloody fighting that has been happening since November. A 73-year-old man from New York was banned from a shopping mall after using the restroom during his morning walk with friends. Long Island resident Anthony Arcis and friends typically exercise at the mall in the mornings in the wintertime. 
He has been banned for five months for using the restroom before the mall officially opened and has been cited for trespassing. Everyone knows that the United States has 50 states, right? While some Californians are proposing a plan that would divide the state into six smaller and more manageable states, Silicon Valley venture capitalist Tim Draper is pushing the proposal to create greater efficiency. Draper says that California is not working and will only get worse without change. Loop is a new device that stores your credit cards electronically. It plugs into the headphone jack of your iPhone and eliminates you having to carry your credit cards around with you. Whenever you wave it over a credit card reader, it sends a magnetic signal and tricks the reader into thinking you swiped an actual card. Loop is now available for order, and soon you'll be able to buy an iPhone case with a Loop transmitter built in. In Tokyo, nearly 300 Holocaust-related books have been vandalized. According to the Associated Press, this has been ha happening since the end of January. The damage done is mainly dozens of ripped-out pages, and the reason this is occurring is still unknown, and Japan has stated that they will not tolerate these acts. That does it for your news. Next, up next, we have Tim Cornell with sports. Tim Cornell here bringing you your sports update. U.S. women's hockey captured the silver medal after Canada scored two goals in the final three minutes and another in overtime to defeat the United States in the gold medal match. This is the fourth straight Olympic gold medal for the Canadian women. The United States and Canada will face off in the men's semifinal at 11 a.m. today. U.S. sits alone atop the medal table with 25 total medals. There are three more days in the Winter Olympics, including today. That's all for your sports update. We'll be back with Brett and Jill. Welcome back to Good Morning KU. Thanks for staying with us. Mm -hmm. So something exciting I know we have going on this weekend is the KU men's basketball mm -hmm. game versus Texas at 6.30. That's right. And, you know, it's going to be a tough game for KU. If they win it, though, it's, a, it's almost as if they're going to be clinching the Big 12. Texas will have five losses in conference. Uh, so really, it'll be almost impossible for KU to lose out of the Big 12. Of course, knock on wood, uh, we don't want that to happen. Uh, we don't want we don't want to lose, but we'll see what happens. Um, in my opinion, it's going to be a very tough game. Uh, Texas is a very strong team. They're coming off a loss, um, so they'll be hungry to get a win. It'll be tough for them in the field house, but I think K is going to be able to pull it out just barely. But. I think so, too. And following that on Monday, I believe we play Oklahoma, which, again, won't be an easy win. But I think these games are really what um, determine our determine our status, obviously, mm -hmm. in conference play. But getting into the into tournament time, these are really um, good practice for us. Yes, and I'm so excited for tournament time. Oh, my goodness. Like Cannot Big 12 wait. tournament comes right at spring break, so be able to just chillax at home and just watch some basketball games on TV. It's going to be fantastic. Absolutely. And something else sports-wise that Tim mentioned just a couple minutes ago is the hockey game that's mm -hmm. going on at 11 a.m. today. That's right. Uh, U.S. Faces, uh, faces Canada in Sochi in what's supposed to be a firecracker of a game. The U.S. hockey team is absolutely fantastic this year. The main, the main, uh, the main theme on that team is speed. They're so speed. fast. TJ Sochi from the St. Louis Blues is just an incredible player. Or excuse me, TJ Oshie, his nickname is TJ Sochi. <laughs> um, but he's the one that won it against Canada, and he's been playing lights out all tournament. Can't forget Dave Backus also plays for St. Louis. Uh, and of course, they'll be playing Sid the Kid, captain of uh, captain of Canada for. Uh, for um, for the game, for the semifinal. Um, if they win, they'll be playing for gold against Sweden, uh, but if they lose, they'll be playing for bronze. But here's hoping they can get out another victory against I Canada. bet. I bet we can do it. U.S. sticking together, we got this. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of the Olympics, I actually have something exciting going on this oh, weekend. Oh, really? I have my probably fifth Olympic-themed party of my college career. <laughs> um, they shoved it down our throats in 2012 with the Summer Olympics, mm -hmm. and now with these Winter Olympics in 2014, the Olympic parties just, just keep on coming. So. Yeah. If anybody has some great costume ideas for me, you know, it can be summer, winter, anywhere from the toga times to now. Mm -hmm. I need help. So I think you can maybe even run, go grab like a kind of wreath or something to put on your head. That could work. That'd be like some like Christmas shopping stuff. Just oh, put on your head. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You'll be the hit of the party. It's a fact. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, I think that's going to do it for us for us today here at Good Morning KU. I'm Brett Ivey. And I'm Jill Bainbridge. Have a great day. <laughs>